I had a viewer that had bought the same box as I and was having difficulties removing this screw right here. All right, I'm using a quarter inch wide flat blade screwdriver. My breakers are off and I'm just turning it counterclockwise like a normal screw. If you're having trouble with yours, it may be cross threaded. And once you take the screw loose, the box lid just slides off. Tab here that fits in this tab right here. So when you put it on, you're hooking it on slide it down. It's important to get it started, of course, fingers, because you don't want to cross-thread that thing. Tighten it back up, and we're all done. Also, I wanted to point out to another viewer, I showed that I installed this shield here to protect the insulation. This shield's been in here through our trips. We've taken two trips now and has not moved at all. There's a half inch gap here and there's no chance of any chafing going on between here and there. As long as that shield doesn't move and it hasn't moved. Most popular videos on my YouTube channel are the electrical system on my trailer. And it is very confusing when you take the whole box in as one pick. To me, to make it more simple, you have to understand there are four different systems. Your first system is your 30 amp 110 system that enters in the box from the side here. Now this is all 30 amp right here, 110 volt 30 amp system right here. I'm gonna post a link to that installation in the top right hand corner of this video. The second system is the solar power system and it's mounted on the roof. Okay, the first wires to consider on the solar is the two solar red and the black solar wires come through this tubing and they enter the box here and the red wire attaches to a 40 amp breaker here and the black wire bypasses the breaker and goes into the solar controller on the negative side the black wire is on the negative side for the solar symbol the red wire continues on the other side of the breaker you can see it right there and it goes around the side of the solar controller and attaches to the positive side of the solar controller. I will post a link to the solar system in the top right hand corner of this video right now. The third system to tie in is the battery bank into the pure sine wave inverter. Now this battery bank is DC electricity and it will tie into the sine wave inverter that will make it into 110 volt electricity. So now you have this source of 110 volt and these two sources of 110 volt as well. For those that have seen my past videos, you would have noticed that all of this 12 volt DC wiring here was red and all those red wires were very confusing to me. What we have here is my battery bank. I have four 6 volt 200 amp AGM golf cart battery. I put them in with all the positives on one side and all the negatives on the one other side for organization purposes. So what I want is to wire these two in for 12 volts and these two in for 12 volts because my lights and my fan and everything else runs off of 12 volts. So the way I do this is I make a short cable and I attach the negative of one to the positive of another. This leaves a negative terminal open and a positive terminal open. If you were to take a voltmeter and measure voltage from here to here, you're going to find 12 volts. Same thing on this side. I have the same two batteries, the short cables attaching the negative to a positive, and we have the positive and the negative left open. And so that right there is 12 volts. So now I have a 12 volt system and a 12 volt system. Now I'm going to ask, this is called series. Now I'm going to hook them up in parallel, this system to this system. And I'm going to have 12 volts coming out, but I'm going to have 400 amps of power available. You'll see I've added this cable from the negative post here to the negative post here. And another cable from the positive post here to the positive post here. Now it's time to connect the battery bank to the solar controller so that the solar panels can charge the batteries. Now I've added two wires to attach the batteries to the solar controller. I'm using white and green rather than red and black to eliminate confusion. So I'm using a white wire here from the positive post and it runs around here to another 40 amp breaker right there. Then on the other side of the 40 amp breaker, white wire comes up and it goes back down runs around the side here and attaches to the positive battery posts on the solar controller. For the negative side, I've got a green wire for the ground and it's attaching to the negative side of the battery and it drops down and goes around to the side here and attaches to the negative side of the battery connection for the solar controller. So now we just have the batteries connected to the solar controller and the solar controller and the solar panels are powering the battery. Now for 12 volt accessories, since I have 12 volt power here, 
I'm going to add this fuse box in and two 12 volt cigarette lighter for anything that might need be needed down the road. This is a marine style 12 volt fuse box and I have wired it into the batteries using a green wire and a white wire. So the green wire is attached to the negative cable of the battery and it winds around to the negative side of the box. And then the white wire is on the positive side of the box and it travels down all the way down to the side here and attaches to the positive side here of the solar controller. Now I would have 12 volts available up here in this box. Now I've wired in the 12 volt cigarette lighter. So I've taken the red and the black wires from the 12 volt cigarette lighter. The black wire attaches to the ground side. The red wire attaches to one of the positive sides here. And we have a 10 amp fuse and you can see how these are just little Phillips screws. And so you just screw it right in and then put in a 10 amp fuse. And now I have the red and the black wire here that came from the ceiling fan. And it loops around behind the breaker here. It might look like it's attached, but it's not. And I've got the black wire attached to the ground and the red wire attached to a different screw. And a 10 amp, a separate 10 amp fuse here. That will protect that circuit. I'm using a 10 amp fuse and that is dictated to me by the manufacturer of the Max Air fan. Right, and now you can see where the red and the black wire come from the sink pump and they come up all the way over here and loop around and the red wire is attached to the fuse block. And we have another 10 amp fuse here protecting that circuit. Alright, so I have a 1500 watt PS1005 pure sine wave converter and on this side over here it's going to have a space for a red positive and a black negative cable. And so I'm using two zero cable and the red is going to go over here and attach to a 150 amp breaker. And then from the other side of the 150 amp breaker, it comes around and attaches to the positive terminal of the battery. The negative side is also a two zero cable and it's going to come around on the side, it's going to attach to this negative post. This sine wave converter also has to be grounded, so it's got a ground post here. I took eight gauge wire and made a little loop and grounded it to the frame. I also have an eight gauge wire running from this post all the way down the side, and it's coming out over here to ground these batteries to the frame as well. So what this does is it gives me the choice of 110 volts from the sine wave converter or from the two outlets here. The fourth system that you've got to consider is the outlet system. The outlets are basically extension cords that extend the electricity from the box to all the individual outlets. Hey, our first step is to have a male outlet. So I went to Lowe's and bought a male outlet here. I attached it to the 10-3 flexible wire cable. I'm going to have two of them. I wanted two different circuits. I want a left circuit and a right circuit. So I don't overload one circuit with everything. Keep in mind, I'm going to be running a microwave TV and several other lights in the heater. And so this cable here doesn't branch out at this point. It's solid and it runs alongside the batteries and outside of the battery box right there. And it goes out here through this protective tubing and it powers the refrigerator and it powers this power strip here and it powers these outlets over here for the TV and various chargers. The other cable here, it attaches to this union here, which I'm going to finish with black tape in a minute. Okay, now you can see I have my short outlet here. This is going to be from my plug-in to the other two cables. I have this one from this outlet back here stripped off and another one from the other outlet stripped off. So I have the three. So each one has a white wire, a green wire, and a black wire. And I need to join these three together to get the electricity from this outlet to from this box to the others. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my three white wires, I'm going to twist them together clockwise. And I'm going to put a wire nut on them so that it holds them together. And then I give them a tug test. Make sure they're all tight. Next, I'm going to wrap the white wires with some black electrical tape. Now I'm going to take the green wires and twist them together clockwise. Make sure they're all good and tight together and put a wire nut on them. Give them the tug test as well. And then I'm going to wrap them with electrical tape. And now I've got to do the same thing with the black wires. Just twist them together, the wire nut on them, the tug test, make sure they're all tight with electrical tape. We have all three of them wrapped, ready to go. Now it's able to be plugged into the wall here. 
and it branches this direction to go to this wall outlet and it splits off and it goes down the top here all the way to that wall outlet. So it provides electricity for that outlet on that end of the box and it provides electricity for the outlet on this end of the box. I know there are converters and automatic systems that will switch from the solar to the shore power. I don't have one of those. For me and my purpose, it's one more system to fail. And again, I'll post a link to a video installing the outlets in the top right hand corner of this video. Please click on that subscribe button down there in the bottom corner. Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.